That's right, kids. We're going to talk about erectile dysfunction. Erectile dysfunction. I know a lot of people don't want to hear about that, but you're going to hear about it today. And why am I talking about it? Because the media is calling it an epidemic. Why is it being called an epidemic? It's being called an epidemic because it's not just an old man's problem anymore. Suddenly, within the last few years, literally within the last decade, they've gone from it being a problem that 60s and 70 year olds complained about to a problem that 20 and 30 year olds are complaining about. 20 and 30 year olds in huge numbers going to the doctor's office unable to form or maintain an erection in the Western world. Not just in the United States here. Canada, Europe, you get the idea, the Western world. So what the hell? What has happened in such a short time? What has happened in less than a decade that this has gone from an old man's problem, an elderly 60, 70 year old guy, to something that someone who's fresh out of college is having a, a problem with, someone who's fresh out of high school is having a problem with, can't get an erection. What changed in such a short time? Well, there's a variety of things. There's Basically, I can give you a list of five. Number one on that list, medications. Everybody is medicated now. Almost everybody. I should say almost everybody because there are a lot of people who don't take medications. I don't. I don't want medications. I don't trust any of that stuff. But we're in a medication society right now where the media pushes and pushes and pushes this, which I don't think pharmaceutical companies ought to be allowed to advertise on TV or on the radio. But they advertise non-stop. And one of the main, one of the main side effects for most prescription medications is guess what? Erectile dysfunctions. It's a timepiece. Pocket watch. Do you have the time to talk about erectile dysfunction? Now I sound like a commercial. And of course, younger and younger people are being given medications all the time. How many kids are on ADHD medication now because they have attention deficit disorder or toxic masculinity? How can they have toxic masculinity if they can't get an erection? Another problem, number two, is apathy. Lack of physical activity. Your body cannot produce its natural hormones if you're not using your body. And we've gone from kids being outside playing all day in the last, really since the advent of smartphones. You know, cell phones by themselves were bad enough, but now we have these smartphones that are fully interactive. And it's like walking around with a personal computer in your pocket all day and everybody is like this. They're like glued to their screen all day long, all these kids. They're going brain soft. They're not moving around. They're not active. It's something that used to drive me absolutely crazy when I ran the JJA facility is we were basically a halfway house. Those kids went to school. The school was up the street. You could see it. Oh, it's too far. I got to walk. Are you serious? Can't you drive us up there? Damn, that's so far to walk. It's a block away. Block and a half. It is not that far. It takes less than 10 minutes to walk up there but that's too far there's too many stairs in the building oh i hate going upstairs all oh, my legs lazy 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 it's pathetic these kids they're not active anymore and you've got to be physically active for the hormones for the natural hormones in your body to function properly or else they just don't it's that simple and of course as most people are aware the more physically healthy that you are the better everything in your body functions and the happier you are. There is a connection there. If all you do is like lay around all day and sit around all day and stare at a phone or stare at a screen or play video games and you don't use your body, you don't have to weigh 500 pounds to be unhealthy. You could weigh 90 pounds and be unhealthy if your body is not being used. Number three. Lack of sleep. Another drawback to the electronics age 
is that people become addicted to constant input. They, they feel like they're going to miss something or they get so used to input constantly coming in, audio-visual input, that they don't know how to not have it. When you take the phone away from the kid, what happens? They're bored. I'm so bored. I don't know what to do. I'm so bored. Oh, why don't you play a game? Oh, board games are boring. Or anything where they have to think instead of staring at a screen is boring. They don't want to go out. They don't want to do a puzzle. They don't want to read a book. Well, hell, half of them can't read a book. And this is something that grows into adulthood. They carry these bad habits with them. And so they stay up half the night staring at a laptop, staring at a tablet, staring at their phone. They're not getting any rest. That and stress, because there's a lot of really odd stresses in society and life that have crept up on us more so in the last few years with the advent of the electronic age. Number four, and this kind of ties in with number two, unhealthy due to poor diet. People eat garbage. They eat garbage, they eat fast food, they eat snack foods, they eat TV dinners. They don't eat real wholesome foods anymore. They're not getting good protein. They're not getting, getting good vitamins or good nutrients. Almost everything that the average person eats is processed food. And the processed food lacks nutritional value, period. It just does. Plus, it has a lot of additives. It has a lot of chemicals that have been added to it, a lot of enzymes that have been added to it, food coloring that's been added to it. Your body has to work hard to get rid of that stuff. You put your liver in overdrive to get rid of food coloring when you eat it. And that's time and energy being taken away from the processing of other functions in your body. It just wears you down. You know, the, it's true. There's the old adage, you are what you eat. Very true. So poor diet very much ties into that. Number five, pornography. Pornography is a really unhealthy practice. It just is. You're going to sit there and watch pornography all the time, which is interactive. You know, people, as far as I understand it, they don't just sit there and watch porno. They're watching it for a reason. <laughs> They're watching it so they can get stimulation out of it. But how much of that can you see before you no longer have visual stimulation? Or does it ruin your expectations of what actual sex or lovemaking is? You're watching a sex performer with another sex performer or multiple or whatever you're looking at. They're putting on an act. They're prolonging the experience deliberately. They're making it look like it should last three hours. They're setting unrealistic expectations. Plus, if you're watching this all the time, you're harboring your own ability to be visually stimulated by the opposite sex. And I think that that robs you of the natural function. It also makes it more difficult for you to use your imagination. And I'll give you one more. Let's make it six. Feminizing of male society. Absolutely, there is an agenda to feminize male society. They got people, they got want to put men in dresses all the time. You watch the music awards, God forbid. You see guys dancing around in high heel shoes. They want men wearing skirts. They uh, promote very gay agendas on television shows, in movies, on cartoons now. You, this is, there is a feminizing are feminizing of society that it isn't healthy you're a ma I, I really believe you're either a male or a female okay I know a lot of people don't agree with that that's fine you don't agree with that you're entitled to your own opinion but there is an agenda to force 
an equalization where things are not equal. Males, by design, are larger, faster, and stronger. And they were made that way for a reason. And a female, a feminist, can't really reach that goal under normal circumstances, but they can sure drag a guy down to where they are. And that identity crisis, I believe, is a big part of the problem. And because of that last bit, this video is probably going to get sanctioned. <laughs> it's going to get sanctioned along with half of my other videos at least. So if you care to make a donation, every little bit helps and I sure do appreciate it. Or if you want to send me a mug or anything else, there is a P.O. box and I'll put that up. You can send me a letter, send me your thoughts, send me a mug. I did have one guy send me a mug so far. One person has sent me a mug. And I do appreciate that. I appreciate all of the subscribers. I really do. If you guys weren't there, I'd have nothing to do. I'd have nothing to do in my spare time. So please do give it a thumbs up if you got something out of the video. Share it if you can. Subscribe if you're new. Check out some of the other videos. If you are new, you may see something that you like. And as it always says, stay tuned because there's more to come.